Welcome everybody. Hey, this is Jeff Phillips with Accounting Fly. Happy Thursday. I'm in Las Vegas where it's been 112 degrees uh, this week. Um, it's a it's a dry heat though, so it's completely comfortable. At least that's what they tell me when uh, when I complain about the heat. Hope you're doing great. Do me a favor before we get started. If you're in the audience, uh, you've got a control panel. Can you go ahead and click uh, in that control panel? Let me know that you hear me loud and clear that it's coming through, please. That way we'll know that you guys can. All right, and Yogi, Yogesh, are you there? Can you hear me as well? I am. Can All you right. hear me? Yeah, fantastic. All right, we, we're we're loud and clear. Um, so everybody, we appreciate you being here this morning. Um, it's it's morning on the West Coast where I am. Uh, probably not so for the rest of you. I'm Jeff Phillips with Accounting Fly, and uh, if you're if you're here, you're probably familiar with Accounting Fly. Uh, where we we are out here to educate you on career opportunities in the public accounting profession. And we have a really great topic today. I'm I'm thrilled that you're you're watching this even if it's live or if it's um, on the recording. Um, so what are we talking about today? Well. Um, you've already heard from Yogesh. I'm going to bring him in in a second. Um, how can auditors become partners? It's a hot topic. Uh, it's a hot topic for a lot of reasons. And one of the reasons is we hear from a lot of folks in the audit side who get to that manager level and they have a lot of questions about their career, um, their future, their career, to stay in public, to switch to private. Why am I not getting to the partner level sooner? Is it my firm? Is it me? We're going to talk about that with Yogesh Patel today, who was named an audit partner at Warren Averett, CPAs and advisors at the age of 34. So about just under 11 years. Um, Yogesh is going to talk about his career path um, from a runner, started out as a runner to an owner um, in the firm and, and how Warren Averett, which is a remarkable firm, has provided the right environment to make this happen. So hopefully uh, you're dialed in. Please ask questions. We'd love to ask Yogesh some questions towards the end of the presentation. And to be honest, um, usually these are an hour. I don't know how long this is going to last, maybe a few minutes shorter, and that's fine. We just want to make sure we have a, um, get the information that you're looking for. But please ask questions. And you can ask questions through your control panel, Just and I'll, I'll ask Yogesh at the end of the presentation. Um, all right. So I'm going to tell you about Yogesh briefly. Uh, Yogesh is a member, um, which, uh, which, which translates to partner with Warren Averett. Uh, Yogesh is in their Atlanta office where he provides audit and assurance services for healthcare, manufacturing, distribution, nonprofit, and technology clients. Uh, he's been with Warren Averett for 13 years and has an accounting degree and a master's of accounting from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Um, Yogesh is a busy guy. He's got two kids. He and his wife have two children that are ages four and two. So I imagine that's keeping you on your toes. Um, and let me tell you about Warren Averett as well. We're going to talk about Warren Averett a little bit more later, but Warren Averett is, has 15 offices across Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, and has become one of the top pace setters in growth among U.S. accounting firms. Here's why I think it's interesting and very much why we sought out Warren Averett to have this conversation today. Warren Averett has 19 partners under the age of 40. So that's 15% of the partner base and includes the firm's CFO. I think that's a remarkable statistic. And I can't wait to ask what makes Warren Averett unique that, to create that condition. Um, uh, and, and in fact, um, the shortest path to partner in the firm to date was about seven years. So um, Warren Averett's uh, in the top 100 firms based in the Southeast and uh, it's just a fantastic place. So now that you know a little bit about Yogesh and you know a little about Warren Averett, I'm going to bring Yogesh in. Um, Yogesh, how's everything going on your end in Atlanta today? Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the warm introduction there. Everything's going well here in Atlanta, and uh, although I'm in a nice, cool office, uh, you know, I still don't feel sorry for you being in Las Vegas. So. Okay. That's, that's a fair uh, point. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so everything's going well. You know, we just kind of teetered down from busy season here, so getting to a steady mode of work, so uh, feels good. Uh, you know, as Jeff mentioned, we're a regional firm, uh, primarily in the southeast, and back when I started, you know, as a runner, I would say we probably had less than 200 folks, you know, in the firm, whereas now we're probably pushing 900. So, you know, over the years, I've seen the firm grow quite a bit and have been a part of uh, you know, a lot of the change in that, in terms of experience that change. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and you know, and and just to give you a quick background on how I got to Warren Abert, it was almost timing really. So I was in college, I was working for a small consulting group, you know, kind of part time, and they decided to close that local office and was looking for a new opportunity. And one of my professors came to me and said, "Hey, Warren Abert's looking for a runner. If you're interested." Uh, you know, at the time, I knew of Warren Averett, great reputable firm, and thought it'd be great to get in the door and kind of see what it's like to be in a public accounting environment. And for those of you who don't know, you know, Runner carries a broad job description. You know, I was doing things from, you know, making the bank deposit to uh, moving furniture from one office to the other, picking up lunches. So that's really where I started my career, Warren Averett. Hey, uh, hey Yogesh, um, were you still in school? Or were you done with school when you started as a runner at Warren Avery? I was still in school. I, was, I think I believe I was in my junior year of college. So uh, ultimately, working in that position led me to an internship my senior year, uh, and then a full time position after that. It's so so you so so then let's let's just talk about the next you know ten or eleven years. You started in school as a runner. You eventually made your way through partner. Can you just Tell the story of, of what happened next, and, and and you know what led to you getting to this point. Yeah, sure. So you know, thinking back over the years uh, and achieving various milestones throughout my career, you know, there's some fundamentals that I say that played a big part of achieving those milestones. Uh, and, and one of them, you know, impact. You know, I think it's important, uh, no matter what level you are in your career, that you're focused on making an impact, whether it's a impact on the firm or the client that you're serving uh, and you know for example over the years within the firm I've been involved in a lot of initiatives you know from training to best practices uh, and, and I tried to focus on initiatives that I have interest in or you know want to improve so that way I can really be vocal and people can see the impact that I'm making within the firm uh, trust you know trust to me was one of the key things uh, that really allowed me to enhance in my career. You know, it's great for people to have trust in you, but I think it's equally important to trust others. Uh, and trusting others and being able to delegate in a certain manner allowed me to grow in my role, uh, you know, throughout the years, as well as help grow other folks, uh, you know, below me also coming up in the ranks. Uh, and, and speaking of trust, you know, when I was a supervisor, there was a client that had reached out to me that. Felt, didn't feel comfortable about how certain things were being transacted within the company, uh, and it turned out that the executive management was perpetrating fairly significant fraud. Uh, but honestly, don't think she, you know that individual would have came forward to me had I not had that trust in place over the years and built that you know with the client. So I think internally and externally, it's very important uh, you know to gain trust of others and also give trust. Uh, you know opportunities. Obviously, uh, Warren Avert has been a great place in terms of providing opportunities to younger folks all the way up. Uh, you know, they allow you to take on as much responsibility as you like early on in your career with clients uh, and internally for certain initiatives. Uh, you know, I think when it comes to opportunities, it's one of those things where you should focus on areas that you're passionate about, uh, you know, where you can exceed. Uh, that way you care about those initiatives and that sort of thing. So. You know, sometimes they're disguised. Uh, you know, my first year as an audit staff, I remember uh, me and my peers had just started our first year, and above us, the senior supervisors have basically turned over all the way. So we were it, you know, when it came to doing the audits. And we were really reconsidering what we've gotten ourselves into. You know, we're working these long hours, not sure what we were doing. Uh, but, you know, it was all a disguise of, really it was an opportunity at the end of the day and that allowed us to grow that much more of being able to step up and do things that typically a first year or second year staff would not do. Uh, and then also mentors. You know, mentors has been, I would say, one of the biggest impacts in my careers uh, within Warren Avert and outside of Warren Avert. Uh, you know, Warren Avert has a culture of, you know, very much paying it forward where the members uh, the partners and managers are very much willing to help you out, you know, and grow you in your career, and that way you can continue to sharpen your skill set, and uh, that's really meant a lot to me. And even till today, I've got the same mentors that I seek advice from, 
uh, that I seek advice from as a staff, as a new staff. So I think it's very important to surround yourself with folks uh, that you can look up to and grow from and learn from uh, as you move along in your career. Hey, hey, you um, know, I just want to say I, I, I agree with that um, completely. And, and I'm just curious, you're saying that having mentors was one of the factors in you getting to audit partner, you know, in, in less than 11 years. Um, what can you just tell the story about how you have gone about acquiring mentors? Is that a formal process in your firm or is it something that you've just been proactive in doing? I just want people to understand, you know, how to be thinking about seeking out advisors and mentors. Yeah, absolutely. And I think part of that has to do with knowing yourself and what skill set you're working on sharpening, you know. So I would say there's not you know, there's not one mentor where I learned everything. I seek several different mentors for different reasons, whether it's, you know, enhance my business development skills or technical skills or just getting general advice on how to handle a situation. So I think you kind of seek those mentors as you grow and you need advice. You know, you kind of feel comfortable who to go to depending on what the scenario might be or the situation might be. Uh, so, you know, it's really just feeling comfortable with that person uh, and then taking an interest in you and growing in your career. All right, that's awesome. Thanks. So that's mentors. What other what other kind of principles were in place here to to that you took advantage of? Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing for me, uh, which I would you know also say for others, is getting outside of your comfort zone. Which is you know obviously for accountants, it's very difficult. You know, uh, you know public speaking. What I'm doing here today. Uh, going out developing business. I mean, those those are things that are really outside of my comfort zone. But uh, you know, halfway through my career, I made an effort, uh, made it intentional to go out there and do these types of things that I'm not comfortable with. So eventually, you get over that hump and you and you feel comfortable doing those types of things. Yeah, that's fantastic. What what um you you had talked about when when we met earlier about you know, your role as a manager in trying to sort of earn the right of being a point of contact at your clients. Can you talk about how you went about doing that and, and what the impact that had on becoming partner was? Yeah, sure. So, you know, in addition to these principles that I kind of felt were, uh, had a lot to do with achieving, you know, growing my career, I think one thing you should strive for, you know, in the audit environment or public company, public accounting environment is when you're serving clients, you want to ultimately, at some point in your career, be the one that they're coming to to seek answers uh, and to get feedback. So, uh, you know, throughout my career, that was my goal was the clients that I've served over the years that, you know, they're coming to me advice, maybe not the senior partner, maybe not the manager if I'm the supervisor, but, you know, that's what you should strive for. And I think that gets recognized early on by, uh, you know, your superiors that, okay, they're now look, looking to Yogesh to seek advice or they trust, they have trust in him to handle the situation. And that ultimately is going to, you know, grow your career even faster when you can get to that point. Yeah, I remember earlier you talked about that story where um, the, the firm came to you when there was some fraud issues. And so it's a great example, I think, of, of earning earning that place in the client's mind that, that you're the go-to person on a project. Um, clearly that's had an effect for you. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, that's, that's something that I think every level, no matter where you're at in public accounting can strive for to some degree. But when you're at the three to six year mark, you know, supervisor, managers, senior managers, I think it's very important. Uh, and it's difficult because you're taking on all the responsibilities already uh, within the firm, uh, but I think it's good to kind of grow outside of your normal role. For example, if I'm an audit manager, maybe grow outside of that role a little bit, learn a little bit about serving the tax side of the client or maybe consulting or you know some other areas that the firm may serve the client and get to know those areas and what all you're doing for that client so you can understand it and take that on to other clients. Uh, so I think that's pretty important. Did you ever... You know, in in your run up to becoming a partner, did did you ever think about leaving public accounting? And and you know, was there ever a point where you 
you thought, well, maybe I should see what private industry is like. And, and, you know, can you tell the story about what, what led you to staying at Warren Abert and in public accounting? Yeah, absolutely. I think to some degree in the back of my head, I think every business season I rethink, what am I doing here? You know, uh, is it time to get out? But, uh, but no, in all honesty, I think the very first year was very difficult. And I thought, you know, maybe this isn't for me. Uh, but I hung in there. And then uh, as a few years, as I got a few years under my belt, it became even harder. You know, the whole, you know, once you're there at the mid level, I think it's very difficult. And that's, the time where you're being approached as well by, you know, industry jobs and headhunters, uh, where you've got that level of experience to go ahead and make that switch to industry. And, and there have been some offers that came my way over the years, and I shared them with the lead audit partner. I said, look, you know, here's here's some offers that I'm getting. What should I do? Uh, and I think in the long run, it will benefit you both financially and quality of life. And, and as far as getting opportunities to stay at the firm versus, you know, seeking industry job right now. And, and, and I agree with that advice now, uh, you know, as I've made it up the ranks and, and, and would give the same advice that, you know, if you already know that public accounting is not for you, it can never really hurt you to stay in it as long as you can, uh, just to make, just to get that additional experience. And you, you would even be more marketable really uh, when you make that decision to change to industry. But, you know, if you're in public accounting and you enjoy it and you're, and you're getting offers and it's a financial motivation, then I would say, you know, rethink that and stick with, stick with the public accounting route because it could ultimately pay off in the long run. And I, I would think I, – I agree and appreciate that last point. I mean, if, if, if you like public accounting and you have an opportunity to take a, a bump in pay um, – it's, you know, don't you think that the long game, the long run of, of working towards getting to where becoming a partner is, can be far more lucrative than in the long run than taking that short term gain? Do you, do you agree with that? Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that our firm has started to do, which I think is great, is we've shared with our younger folks some high level metrics of, you know, what does partner comp look like? You know, what's when you're finally there, what does it look like? Because I think a lot of firms, uh, uh, you know, that may be a question is, okay, if I make it all the way, what does it really look like? And so we started to share some of that information within the firm, and I, I think it's been great uh, and been well received by our younger folks and really motivated them even more that, okay, now I can see the benefit of hanging in there and working through, you know, a career in public accounting. Yes. Smart move. I mean, I, 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 think, um, I think seniors – and to a lesser degree, managers are, are really trying to have those questions answered because um, they're the ones getting a lot of calls right now. Um, I want to go back to your story, Yogesh, about getting to partner by age 34. And, um, you know, it's my impression that in public accounting firms, when you start to yeah. business opportunity, you do business development, that that's a big boost in getting to partner. So my first question is, Is was that the case for you? I mean, did you get to the point where you were doing business development? And can you just tell the story about um, about how how you started to produce business and, and what did you do to get business? And, and did that have a role in becoming part? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm like many other auditors out there where you, you've got your head down, cranking out the hours uh, and doing work and you look up and on. His partner, and obviously one of the major roles of a partner is to grow the firm and develop business. So I think I started a little late. Uh, so the advice I would give really is I think it's important to start early. It's, you know, never too early to start building relationships within, uh, you know, networking organizations or just whoever you meet on a professional setting. And the goal is not really to, to sell your firm or to sell a service. It's really just building a relationship and by chance, if anything comes up that you can help them with, which may be something your firm offers, or it may be just helping them get connected with, you know, someone else, a, another service firm or a banker. So I think it's important early on in your career to just focus on that in addition to the technical side of, you know, putting in the hours and getting experience. I think it's equally important to get out there and just start learning how to connect with people, build relationships, and see where you can help them out. 
And I think that ultimately turns into business development opportunities for you down the road. So, so, did, so it sounds like you did some work around this and, and did that help you get to partner faster? Yes, I, I believe so. You know, I think it's uh, definitely emphasized that, you know, business development uh, is the growth engine of our firm. And I think if we show the ability to develop business to some degree that, you know, the firm is definitely willing to uh, look at that and give an opportunity to become partner. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I think that's great advice. Clearly, the firm cares about it. It's growing the business, but um, you you really can't just sit in your in your role and sit and stay inside that box and not be out in the community, uh, building relationships with other service providers and with potential clients. Um, so that's, that's true. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. And, and to that point, you know, one thing I'd like to bring up is eventually, you know, working in a regional firm, I've worn a lot of different hats. Uh, you know, as far as the industries that I've served uh, over the years and the types of projects I've worked on. And I think to some degree, when you get a little further on your career, you, you want to narrow that, you know, to maybe focus on certain industries or certain types of work that you can really focus on and build deeper relationships, uh, you know, within the networking community or prospects or whoever it may be. Uh, so you've got a foothold in that market, you know, that you're trying to develop and not just across the board. So as a young partner, that's basically what I'm going through right now is, you know, focusing on what areas should I, you know, what is my experience and what areas should I focus on on developing? What's been different about being a partner uh, as opposed to sort of trying to, to, to climb up that ladder? Uh, have you, was, did anything surprise you about becoming a partner? Well, you know, I, I think the firm has done a great job of uh, exposing and what does it look like uh, so I kind of had a feeling but now that I've actually made partner I feel like you know before you make partner your obviously your goal is let me get to that partner role uh, but now that I'm there I've kind of learned that you know I've really just started uh, all over again so and that's great I mean it's, it's exciting it's challenging uh, and when I say just start again you know now I've got new opportunities uh, new roles, uh, and 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 really, just when you look at my peer group now, as a young partner, I'm being evaluated with seasoned partners, and you know, when you look at the range there, it's just it could be overwhelming, and just being able to deliver and do your part, you know, again to make the firm successful, it's 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 a great opportunity to have, but at the same time, again, I feel like I've just started. <laughs> It's, it's, that's a neat point. Um, and you, you bring up Warren Avert here, and I think it's a good time to – I'd like to ask about, you know, Warren Averett and the firm around you. Um, what What's the role that they played in helping you get to this point where you, you were partner in, uh, in less than 11 years? Yeah, sure. So one of the things that I found out very quickly when I started at Warren Averett is – the culture and the strong leadership that's been in place and really uh, the sincerity they have in caring for their employees and their clients. You know, clients come first as well as employees and they balance that very well. So, you know, they Warren Avery has put me in the environment along with others to where you can really thrive and grow uh, from the sense that uh, they're continuously looking to make improvements uh, from the client enhancement side to grow our client base and to allow folks opportunities uh, to work on more and more uh, complex clients. And really, I think that becomes a recruiting tool in a sense that uh, you know, you're able to get so much interaction with clients at an early stage uh, at Warren Averett versus maybe some larger firms or uh, you know, international firms. So whereas my first or second year, you know, I probably saw a full cycle of audit versus you know working in a public accounting firm, you may just see one aspect of the audit. So in, in short, really, they just give you a, a lot of responsibility early on and allow you to have client interaction. And I think ultimately, in that environment, you know you really thrive and grow a lot quicker. 
Why do you think there are so many younger partners at Warren Avery. It's a big firm, and um, and I, I, you know, I read that statistic earlier that there's 19 partners under the age of 40. So that's 15 percent of the base, including the firm's CFO. And what is it about your culture that is allowing this to happen? I think that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, I think really it's just the entrepreneurial mindset. You know, they encourage it. We live it. Uh, they want you know input from everyone within the firm and, and want everybody to be entrepreneurial. I mean, it's it's how we've grown the firm over the years from, you know, Birmingham-based firm to now a large, you know, regional firm. I think it's just the spirit that's given there. And then, you know, intense client focus. So, you know, it's it's just number one, client comes first, the value that we're adding to the client. So I think in those instances that, you know, they really focus on the client, which gives you the experience of, you know, how do you serve a client? what's important to them, uh, and how do you add value. So I think doing that keeps you in an environment where you're learning constantly and getting experience and just taking that on to other areas, you know, uh, whether it be business development that you're going out talking to prospects or, uh, you know, on other clients that you're working on. I, I really like how you were exposed to the full cycle of an audit very early that you were exposed to clients in a, you know, you, you had the opportunity to really get to know clients early on. Um, I, 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 I can definitely tell that that structure Warren Averett has really helped you. Um, I, you know, you mentioned this word growth a bunch of times today and clearly Warren Averett's helped you grow. All right. So look, let me, this is a question we didn't spend a lot of time talking about when we met, um, but it, but it's it's a it's a question that came in while we've been talking, and I really am glad that, that somebody sent it in, and it's about work life balance, um, and 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 I want to ask you about what you know how you balance your 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 personal life with work, but before I do, I'll, I'll just tell the audience that that we we continually poll. CPAs and ask them what are the issues they're they're facing and and um, what is bothering them you know about uh, public accounting and what their greatest challenges are and time after time it's work life balance so clearly there's there's some struggles here and so Yogesh you know my question to you is how do you personally achieve work life balance with your client work your best yeah you, with 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 not only your client work but also having a personal life. Um, and, and if you have any thoughts on just how you make that work. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something I think Warren Averett has done a great job. Greatly in technology, uh, and just promoting work-life balance. You know, they want you to spend time with your family. Uh, they want you to be able to take off certain times, uh, when you need to. And, and we're very good in a team environment in terms of, okay, if, you know, if there needs to be something handled from a client perspective, we'll find someone else to handle that if you really need to handle something, uh, you know, family matter or whatever it may be. But but overall, over the years, work-life work balance is challenging, but it can certainly be done. Uh, you know, throughout the last few busy seasons, uh, you know, I've, you had mentioned I've got two small kids, and that's been more of an emphasis for me. Uh, than ever, and I've been able to achieve really good work-life balance from the standpoint of, uh, you know, obviously prioritizing what I do in terms of uh, client work, having a good team built around me where I can rely on folks to handle things, uh, and then really the technology that the firm has invested, there's not many places we can go and not do our work. You know, uh, basically we can take our office with us wherever we go and achieve uh, whatever we need to, you know, for the day and still, you know, handle work-life balance. Yeah. <clears throat> that That's fantastic. Um, it, it's interesting to hear your perspective and, you know, it's, it's not easy, right? It's, it's, it's a challenge for everybody, but it sounds like you have, you work in a good team that, that gives you the support or, or that you extend the support to, um, you know, to, to have a life is much more, much more what we're looking for here. That's right. Um, so I, you know, I wanted to talk about something else when it, since we're talking about Warren Averett. Um, you, you listed out some principles like like making an impact, developing trust, taking care of opportunities, et cetera, that helped you rise up 
but I want to ask you about like the technical side of things. Um, you know, did you did you come into the industry after your school ready to perform audits from a technical standpoint? Clearly, you've grown on the uh, on the biz dev and and the the, the, the sort of leadership side of accounting, but did, how has Warren Abert helped you grow from a technical knowledge standpoint? Yeah, I think, you know, in, in school, I think you get a very basic knowledge of, you know, uh, the technical side of things, but it's really uh, when you get to work is when you really learn it. And Warren Abert, uh, again, uh, has done a great job on the technical side of on-the-job training, if you will, and then also internal training that we have that's, you know, we've got a talent group uh, internally that that establishes, you know, uh, what training needs to be done, whether it's new standards that are coming out or soft skills or whatever it may be, you know, they'll get you ready for that and have those trainings throughout the year. Uh, but, but, yeah, on the technical side, you know, one of the things that I've enjoyed about working with Warren Averitt is we've got partners of all walks of life. You know, there's there's me who's homegrown, started at the firm, became partner. Uh, we've got several firms that have, uh, several partners that have worked in, in international accounting firms and have moved over to our firm. So we've got so much talent, you know, at, at all levels that you just gain so much technically as you work on various clients. Uh, so I think on the job training, they do, you know, the firm's done a great job in getting, getting me ready as far from a technical standpoint. Uh, and then you've got folks, you know, from our quality control group and, again, seasoned partners who've come on board uh, with various accounting firms bringing all kinds of knowledge and ex expertise uh, that allow you to grow. So I think that's been a huge factor for me, you know, over the years is to learn and grow from them. Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's a, a, a topic that's not usually talked about. We sort of always dance around the fact that, well, you, you – you come into the industry with technical skills, but you got to learn leadership skills. Well, you really kind of got to do both. And and if you make that investment in both, then you'll clearly get to partner faster because you'll be technically proficient, but you'll also be good at leadership, client communications, business development, managing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, on the technical side, I'm not a fan of researching technical topics, but I've you know, took the initiative on all my clients to do that initial research, whether if it is going to be another partner or, you know, quality control person that's going to make the decision. And I think that's, you know, that's good for you early on to learn how to research and uh, look for guidance and come to a conclusion or a position on something uh, will help you out, you know, later on in your career uh, as you grow. So, Yogesh, um I want to like take it back for you, like if you were talking to your 28 year old self, which I imagine for you would probably be at about that four to six year mark in audit, and um, you you know the issues that people at that at that point in their career are thinking about and what they're facing, and I just want to open it up and and you know what what would you have told yourself at at 28? You know, maybe you're at that four to six year mark. What what would be some of the advice um, that you would tell yourself back then? Well, I think uh, again, you know, my whole career was at Warren Averett, and I think Warren Averett did an excellent job of training me on the technical side, uh, especially in those years and and managing workloads and that, that sort of thing. But one thing I probably would have focused on more at that age is really again business development and making relationships uh, and establishing and growing relationships outside of the firm. Uh, and I think uh, that's one thing that I didn't really focus on during that time frame. And, and now we, we are, as a firm, helping our younger folks focus on those things. Now we've got, we're developing a, uh, you know, an official program for business development and that sort of thing. So I'm really excited about that, that our younger folks will be able to go through that and, and, and get assistance and help into going out there and building relationships. But I think that's one big item that I probably would have focused on that I didn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, outside of that, it's just you know, growing in client roles, you know, as quick as you can. At that age, again, you're, you know, during that time frame, you're very busy with just the client load that you already have. You know, it's all about charging hours, getting your goals and that sort of thing. But you also need to stop and take a step back and, look, you know, just, get a high level view of the clients that you've served and 
and really just understand what parts of that do you like, not like, and you know, if there's a certain industry, and that may be the time to focus on that. So, you know, you know, I worked on a nonprofit client. That wasn't really my thing. Well, you know, well, maybe you want to focus on some other types of clients. Or maybe you helped out on a special project and you enjoyed that. Well, maybe uh, that's something you want to look at working on in the future and not just audits. So I think just kind of focusing on what you enjoy most about the job at, at that level will help you, uh, you know, grow in your career because you're going to enjoy it more uh, once you figure out, okay, here's the things that I like. All right. The first thing you mentioned was you'd, you'd probably would have invested more in business development. And I'm just curious if there's anything specific you would have done differently. Um, you did mention building relationships, but I'm just curious, you know, when you were thinking about that, what did you have in mind that you would, you would have done differently about getting started in business development sooner? Yeah, I think what I would have done probably is been a little bit more intentional and asked the partners above me say, hey, next time you go on, you know, maybe a, a referral lunch or, you know, a prospect meeting, would you mind taking me along with you? You know, and maybe something as simple as that, say, hey, get me involved and maybe give me a small speaking role if it requires it or let me just, if I can just tag along with you, let me learn and see what you talk about. I think, you know, if I would have done that earlier on, when I would have been able to get more insights as to, you know, how do you build those relationships? What does it mean? What are you looking for? Uh, how do you help each other out? You know, what opportunities are there when you're talking to a banker or attorney or whoever it may be? So uh, that's probably one one thing that I would you know suggest is early on in your career is to don't be afraid to ask you know, the partner, or senior manager, whoever it may be, to you know tag along and and see what they're doing outside of the firm walls in terms of you know, developing business or, and building relationships. I think, I think that's a great suggestion. Um, just to be proactive, get in on some, on, on these new business meetings and learn how those are done. Yeah. Um, no, you, did you, uh, tell the story about how you, you were in Birmingham with the firm and then you moved to Atlanta. Do I have that right? That is correct. So to give you some history on the firm, you know, as I mentioned early on, that we have grown quite a bit over the years, and uh, some of that's been organic, but we've also had a series of mergers. You know, I would say in the past five years, we've grown tremendously, and that's really just the nature of our industry right now, you know, uh, being able to serve a client globally uh, and holistically in the services they that they require. You know, clients are getting more sophisticated and, and the services they need. Uh, so in expanding that, uh, you know, we've grown a lot over the last five years, and uh, I worked in the Birmingham office, which is where I originally started for most of my career. And then fast forward, I guess, probably four years ago, uh, you know, we were in a CPA alliance firm uh, with many other member firms. And there was an Atlanta member firm uh, that we have had a really good relationship over the years. And we decided to merge forces. So, uh, you know, effectively, three or four years ago, we had an Atlanta office. And I think for one, these mergers have really created opportunities for our folks internally. You know, there are times we've had several folks that are transferred between offices within the region, you know, different regional offices, uh, and been able to participate in different things within offices. You know, we do staff sharing, that sort of thing. And, and really, it's, it, to me, it's been a really big positive uh, with the mergers in the sense that we've just created a lot more opportunities for uh, you know, the folks at our firm. So, so did you move with, uh, did you relocate from Birmingham to Atlanta when that happened? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, uh, at the time, yep. Uh, and so, um, okay, so I didn't, I guess I didn't realize this, but you started out in Birmingham and then you moved to Atlanta. Did you move to Atlanta to, to be in the new, newly merged firm or was it, was it, you know, what was the motivation for you to, to change cities? Yeah, so, you know, my wife and I decided to actually move to Atlanta for personal reasons because uh, my parents retired and moved up here, and then I have family members up here, and my wife also has family. So it just kind of made sense. You know, we loved Birmingham. It's a great place to live, but we, we were making frequent trips to Atlanta, and finally it just made sense. You know, I think Atlanta may be our home. So. That's ultimately how we got here, and you know the firm provided that avenue from the sense of growing, and uh, fortunately, you know we have an office here now. 
Well, I, I, I think it's great that you had the flexibility or the, the mobility to be able to change locations um, and keep employers. So uh, glad to hear that Warren Avert was was comfortable with that. Um, did so so this merger with the firm in Atlanta, then you joined this office. Did did the merger and, you know, in your opinion, did this merger and this and you moving to Atlanta help you with making partner earlier? Absolutely. I, I believe so. One hundred percent. You know, I think. Uh, one thing that's gone on over with a series of these mergers is we've found that, you know, different geographics specialize, may specialize in a certain industry or certain service. Uh, so what that's really done is in, in all of our offices created opportunities from the standpoint of, well, we may be serving this industry, but what about, you know, this industry So or that industry? So from that perspective, it's it's, it's just been a lot of growth in all of our offices. So same here in Atlanta. It's allowed me to grow certain areas that this firm, the former firm in Atlanta, did not have, such as healthcare, financial institutions, government. So those types of things, that, you know, those types of industries they did not serve before, but now I've got an opportunity to grow those and develop those. It kind of goes back to your point earlier about seizing opportunities, and you work at a firm that allows you to seize opportunities, but you were the guy that had to do it and you had to take advantage of the opportunities that were presented to you. And, and, um, you know, this, I mean, I would say that moving to Atlanta and getting involved in that Atlanta office after the merger, um, is a great example of that for you. Would you agree? Absolutely. And, you know, anytime there's a merger there, you know, there's definitely challenges in terms of, you know, transitioning and synergies and that sort of thing. But if you look outside of that, I mean, it's very, it's a very positive experience. Uh, and again, uh, it allowed me to grow a lot quicker uh, with with you know with the grown firm, and uh, and again expand areas that weren't here in this geographic. So I think that ultimately did help me get there quicker in terms of career growth. That's awesome. Um, well, so what I've done during the conversation is weave in some of the Q and A from the audience um, as follow up questions to you, Yogesh. Um, and so uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to the audience if you have any other questions. We do have one that um, that that I'll I actually have a couple that I'll ask you. But if you guys have any other questions for Yogesh, um, fire them away. But actually, one of the one of the folks in the audience is looking for some advice, um, a little bit outside of the audit spectrum. But um, and, and Yogesh, the question is, is what would be a good starting point for a recent grad that has passed the CPA exam but doesn't have any accounting internship? experience. And I'll tell you, from my perspective, um, you're going to, you know, whether you're going to be on the tax side or the audit side, I, I would, it's great that you've passed a CPA. That means you're highly sought after, but I would encourage you to probably get an internship to get some working experience in public accounting, make sure that's the right fit for you, and then pursue an entry-level job. Who knows, maybe you would even get an entry-level job at the firm you happen to uh, intern. Um, Yogesh, do you have any, you have any opinion on that? Yeah, no, I think I agree with you 100%. I think an internship is a great way to start off just to see, again, if that's something that you will enjoy doing and if the firm itself is a good fit for you. Uh, you know, sometimes it may not be for whatever reason, so that will allow you other opportunities as well. And uh, and that, again, may lead into a, a full-time position if you enjoy yeah. Uh, yeah. that work and, and, and it's a good fit for you. So another question we have is is for you, Yogesh, is is really just kind of assessing your role. Like, what do you like the best about your role and and, and your role at Warren Averett? Um, and what do you like the least? Like, what what's what's something great and something that that uh, could be improved on in your role at the firm? Yeah, sure. So you know, what I like the most is uh, just the interaction I have. You know, I enjoy working in teams, uh, and and I like that every day is a different day for me. So you know, always working with a great, a great team, and the, the team varies. You know, that's depending on what client I'm working on, and then uh, just being able to help clients thrive. I mean, what we really do, sure, we have core services, which is audit and tax, that are required to be done right for our clients. But we really have an opportunity there. Uh, as a firm, we think we have an opportunity there to add value to our clients and help them ultimately succeed. And, and that's the satisfaction that I've gotten over the years. Is helping our clients thrive and uh, and being a part of that success. Uh, you know, what I like least, you know, uh, there's always times where it gets, uh, you know, during busy season, for example, it just allows you 
less time, you know, during those few months. And it's not necessarily a negative, but it's just, uh, you know, the client loads a lot. So, you know, yeah. if I could smooth that over a little bit more, then that would be great. But there's not a whole lot that I don't enjoy about what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but it's a good question. <laughs> I'm glad you answered it. The, um, the oh, this is a question we have is, um, and that's what's uh, what it is is about Warren Abram. If you're hiring, and and, and I, I agree, I, the question is, you know, are you guys hiring, and kind of what what is what is recruiting at Warren Abram look like? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, that we're always looking for, uh, you know, motivated entrepreneurial spirit, uh, you know, minded people to to join our firm and to, and to be a part of the team and uh, you know, it's been a great experience from my part and uh, yeah I mean I think we're always looking for those uh, folks yeah and I would I would uh, second that and sort of make the point on the on the especially and for I just know from from Warren Abrams perspective audit and tax seniors and managers across your most of your locations in the southeast um, so if you're watching this and, and, and you're interested in learning more, um, please follow up. Hey, do me a favor, um, Yogesh, if you want to advance that, that second slide, I want to give everybody um, Warren Averitt's uh, website so they could check out and learn more about your firm as we're closing up here. And what I'd like to do for the audience is also, um, if anyone out there is interested in learning more and would like to send an email or a resume to Warren Averitt, I just sent you through the chat panel an email address, careers at warrenaverett.com. Um, feel free to send your resume uh, to, to the team at Warren Averett. Um, there's their website, their Twitter handle, as well as ours. So um, wrapping up here, um, I really appreciate, Yogesh, you taking the time to tell us your story um, and learning a lot about Warren Averett and, and why it's a, why you know you were able to achieve some remarkable success that clearly you, you had a firm behind you to get you there. Um, so, and by the way, you know, let's go back to uh, one of your principles, getting out of your comfort zone. Nicely done, sir. I appreciate that. No, no problem. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's very important. And uh, this is, I'm, I'm leading the example here of being on, being on, being a part of this webinar. And I appreciate the opportunity. And I really hope uh, there are some take takeaways here that, uh, you know, the audience can have and uh, to take with them. No, they, there certainly were. Um, and we're going to get the recording of this, uh, the recording of this out to the audience that signed up, and then uh, we'll, we're going to post this on our blog with links to Warren Averett, their careers email as well. So, Yogesh, um, thank you very much. We're going to we're going to go ahead and and uh, and end the session. But sir, thank you. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And um, and for those of you out on the call or watching this live or on recording, thanks for being a part of this. Thanks to Warren Averett and Yogesh Patel. So Yogesh, bye for now. Bye, thank you very much, thank you all. And thank you to everybody. We'll go ahead and end the day's session. Have a great weekend.